Um, just before I get started in the corporate overview, I'll give you a very, very brief um, overview of my own experience and how it relates to the company, as well as how it may or may not relate to some of some of you in the room. Um, I came out from Ontario. Um, I was born in Calgary, so if you would like to call me a true Albertan, I will, I will take it. But I was raised in Ontario. I came out here with a chemistry and science degree. I started with Agate shortly after. I've taken on a multitude of roles and responsibilities, commencing in the CEO role, which I've been in in two years, or for the past two years. I've also worked in the environmental consulting industry out in Western Canada for a firm centralized in, in Calgary. I've had an acting role on the board of directors with the Canadian Land Reclamation Association. So the past term was president and I'm now sitting as, as past president. I've been intimately involved with the Sundry Petroleum Operators Group and most recently I've been accepted into the advisory committee for the Environmental Services Association of Alberta. The two advisory seats that they're holding for the industry advisory committee for the site rehabilitation program under your ministry, Minister Savage. So very quick. Let's get started with the corporate overview itself. So when people ask us about Agate or when we're doing a presentation or when we're in the community, there's typically two big questions that come up. One, number one is, what's with the Agate globe? Where did that logo come from? And number two is, what does Agate stand for? So I'll answer the second in a, in a couple slides. But in terms of the globe, one of the reasons I believe that that question comes up primarily is because many individuals understand that we're a privately owned Canadian company. And from a bricks and mortar standpoint, we are centralized here in Canada. So it begs the question then why the globe? What does that mean to you? Well, you'll see later on that we have quite a bit of international experience, but this picture for us really culminates in what the globe means to us. And that is that we are all interconnected. The actual geographic borders become somewhat of a moot point because we can connect with the world. We can connect with each other. And for us, that really is truly foundational in science. We believe that science can bring us all together. We believe that science has a commonality in language. And when it comes to research and development and innovation and the things that really push us forward, not just as a company or not just as a province, but truly as, as a country, we can become a global leader here in Canada. And we've bought into that mindset. We continue to grow in Canada. We are different than the rest of the competition because we are still Canadian owned. Much has been bought out by foreign ownership. So we trust in the Canadian market and we continue to reinvest. And so the globe to us really means that, yes, we have international aspirations. We have international experience. We are connected with the world, but Canada will always be our home. Couple of very key quick stats, 41 years in, in business and science, we celebrated that this past July. In any given year, the number of samples will fluctuate, but overall, typically over 6.3 million samples and continuing to rise up. Over 3,200 specialized tests. Now, if that was a ticker, that also would continue to increase because we're continually accrediting services. And most notably, over 45,000 clients. And the things that we really focus on here is that the large majority of those clients are recurring. We're not in the business of one and done. We don't want people to to just come into the into the company for this year and and leave we want to build long-lasting partnerships with each of the companies that we work with and you'll see how that's led to our success when we're talking about the service sectors obviously energy sector is incredibly important to us if anybody is sitting in this room and doesn't know that we operate in the energy sector then we're not doing a good job because that's how the company has been built but beyond there we have diversified into a multitude of sectors and like i said in large part that's because we know that there are going to be cycles we recognize that what we're in right now and these these down downturns are inevitable to continue to move forward. And so we need to be prepared for it. We need to diversify and we need to offset those cycles with other sectors. Additionally, that top line with full service laboratory solutions, that's where we've really worked with those relationships that we've built with the companies that we operate with. And we've tried to understand cradle to grave what kind of analytical services that they need. You don't need to offer all the services that we do as a lab, but it's certainly an advent advantage to the company itself because we can come in with a very wholehearted package and we can provide them with services across the board. So we started in the energy sector very early, early on. We said Canada is a resource-based country. If we can work in energy, why can't we work in the other resources? And we grew from there. So mining, environmental, transportation, industrial, life sciences, and agri-food. When we're talking about our own advantage, it, it very much goes back to that private Canadian ownership, the national geographic span that we truly have. We believe that that gives us an advantage over and above all. But it's also about, like I said, that relationship with the clientele, building something that's more than just the laboratory analysis, providing the highest quality of data, being there to lean on for educational support, being able to develop a partnership in which we can understand what each client needs and how it can drive 
the economy forward and then how we can reinvest that into the communities that we serve. And you'll see that that's truly important for the company itself. So where'd we start? Um, this is a shot from 1982. The company itself was incorporated in 1979. I can promise you that while we still have this building, it doesn't look like this. Um, you'll, see the you'll see the updated shots as we go forward, but that's where we started. Um, and really, it was a story about taking a chance and trying to find that optimism in an otherwise dark time. Now, I know that, that the majority in here understand what 1982 in the oil and gas industry meant and it was not optimistic. So John DeSanti at that point was, was consulting with the company at that time called Applied Geosciences and Technology, so that's where the Agate name came from. We, we go by Agate now, we don't typically reference that, but that is really what it, it, it has stood for in the past. And he has an accounting background. He's no scientist, I'm sure he didn't grow up thinking he was gonna own an analytical laboratory. But the company was in dire straits and he had an opportunity to take it over and where no one else saw opportunity, um, John saw an option. He thought, you know what, I can make something of this. Yeah, it's not a great time right now, and it's not a great industry right now, but I can make a go of this, and we can grow, and we can diversify. And very quickly within the company, John was joined by Alan Kostanyuk, who's in the room with us today as well, too. He's been our acting CFO for a number of years until he joined the board of directors just a year and a half ago. Both of them, again, accounting backgrounds, but they trusted in the vision. They trusted in the ability that we could grow from oil and gas and we can build it into something bigger. And that leads to our purpose. So um, before I get into what we do and, and where we serve and, and the service lines themselves, it's important for you guys to understand why we do this, what the story is. And for us, that is service beyond analysis. So in years past, this has been used as a motto, a tagline, but it's really truly our purpose. So like I, I mentioned, with accountants coming into a science company, you might understand that the purpose wasn't necessarily always the science. The science is what we do, and it's how we get to why we do it, and why we do is because we wanted to serve. The idea was that from an entrepreneurial standpoint, that entrepreneurial vision where you can kind of grow from nothing and expand into more, again, going to the fabric of Canada and the heritage of so many that have really built the country for what it is, the idea was that we could build something to serve those three pillars, our people, our clients, and our communities. And the whole thing falls if one of those aren't in place. So if we can't lean on our own people, if we can't give them job opportunities, long-term established career growth, we're not going to be a company for much longer. If we can't lean on our clients to support us and be able to provide us those opportunities to do better, the same idea. And finally, if we can't reinvest in the same communities that trust us and allow us to operate where, where we've opened our doors, once again, we're not gonna get the buy-in from the communities themselves. And the whole idea is that we've been built to serve. We do it through science, but the idea and the purpose is to serve these three pillars. So where are we now? You saw that first lab in 1982. Here's the map of Canada as we stand today. These are all actual agate facilities. So these are either full laboratory locations or they're branch locations. In addition to this, we have a very wide depot network that would span across Canada. And the depots are agreements that we would have with other companies where we provide them an opportunity to help us from a logistical standpoint, accept samples, ship samples. So when we're talking about economic growth and job creation, it's even further extended than what you're seeing on the map today. But this is what we've built ourselves into. So from that one tiny lab in Calgary, we've spanned coast to coast to coast, and you'll hear a little bit about how we got there in the story itself. But what's most important on this slide is that this is the result of organic growth. For the most part, there's very few acquisitions that would be stories in this legacy. And we all know that there's advantages to, to each way, um, but the difficulty with organic growth is that it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, there is a tremendous amount of risk. You have to be able to be tolerant of the ability that you know that you're gonna take those losses because you can see that vision moving forward. So each of those dots represents us building from the ground up, rolling up the sleeves, taking empty warehouses, building them into laboratories, taking zero market share and building it into one of the top market share providers in each sector that we're serving. International experience, I already touched on this a little bit, but here's the actual international experience that we have. So yes, while bricks and mortar are in Canada, that does not mean that we have not had quite a bit of international experience itself. And this has primarily been because of relationships that we've had in the oil and gas industry. So again, going back to those trusted partnerships, we've been called upon in a multitude of cases to help consult on projects abroad. And this also rep represents opportunity where we've taken international work and we funneled it back into Canada. So for the most part, most of this work has been serviced by the Canadian operations. Now, the area that would be a little bit indifferent from that would be our um, Mexico operations. So 
years past, we've served Pemex for a multitude of contracts. We've had local operations actually down in Mexico, and then still a subset of that work went back up to the Canadian market. And this international experience is something that you will see to continuing to be part of our strategic plan as we move forward. This is a quick snapshot of the corporate and global headquarters. Um, the corporate and global headquarters has always been in Calgary. It's changed buildings, but this is where we're currently sitting on 21st Street. So we've got finance, HR, accounting, safety, QA. I, I sit out of the office. John sits out of the office as well, too. So multitude of the support services there. And that's where, we'll, again, we will be supporting the international expansions as we move forward. Now, again, nothing without our people. The human resources standpoint is very important to us. What is key here is that we are a leader in employment equity. We take that very seriously. We have an incredible diversification of um, personnel across the company itself. And as you can see, I'm representing the company in the CEO standpoint. You all recognize that that is a very small amount of companies that can, continue, that can say that at this point. So the employment equity is, is very much valuable to us. The other thing is the diversity of the technical personnel that we have. So a lot of individuals know us from one sector or one service line. And so they understand that perhaps we have some chemists or perhaps we have some geologists. But because we have such a diversification of service lines, from a scientific background, pretty much anything that you could think of exists at this company. Chemists, biologists, agronomists, engineers, petrophysicists, you name it, you can typically find it. And the reason that's important is because when we talk about the research and development opportunities, we can actually pull together a team, a cross-technical team that can consult on highly specialized projects themselves. And the other very important fact for us is that over 60% of our staff contain a bachelor's of science degree or higher in terms of a technical degree as well, too. Now, quality assurance. Um, a lot of people think that this comes without saying that quality assurance is important to, to a lab. Um, and we do, we do hope that most people do believe that. What we do find in the industry, though, is that it's taken for granted. We find a lot of companies and clients and individuals who believe that if you're an operating lab, you must be accredited by somebody. And then if you are accredited, you must be accredited for everything. And that's just not the case. You can hold a certificate of accreditation, but that could be for two tests instead of 3,200 tests. Um, so you all understand business. You all understand risk. So let me frame this for you very quickly. You own a laboratory company. The results that that laboratory company is pumping out is either ensuring that the safety of the food that is ingested by Canadians is up to standards, or that the quality of the water that they are drinking is going to keep them in, in, in perfect health, and nothing is above guideline. Now, you can imagine that if your quality assurance department cannot be trusted, then you really don't want those results going out because you understand the backside risk of that, right? The results that we're using, they provide our clients, they provide the, the regulators, they provide them with the data and the results that they need to ensure that we are protecting human health, that we are protecting the environment, and we're making critical decisions that corporations are doing each day. So we very much stand behind our QA department and our results. They report directly into myself outside of operations, so there can be no room for bias. And we hold a number of different accreditations. So Standards Council of Canada, Canadian Association of Laboratory Accreditation, ISO 9001, 17025. We hold US NELAP accreditation for some of our services as well, too. So again, that all external auditors that would come in and ensure that what we're doing within the labs is what to be expected. Safety, also utmost, utmost importance, of course, again, Without our people, without our clients, we cannot go forward. So we want to make sure that our own people within the walls and confines of the company are safe, that when we go out to client sites that we're continuing to keep it safe, our lead of safety reports directly to myself as well and sits out of that corporate office. And just a shot of the instrumentation. So Here's an example. You can't see the lab. You're going to see a multitude of images like these. These aren't stock photos. These are the labs themselves. The instruments that you're seeing, the people that you're seeing, that's who Agate is. Again, you are welcome to come back at any point in time. We also shot a quick video of the environmental laboratory that we'll be providing you guys later on so that you can see what it would have looked like should you have gone for a tour as well. The key here is that the instrumentation required to do what we do is quite advanced and it's ever changing. And one of the most important things from a Canadian perspective, from an Alberta perspective, is that we stay on top of it. We continue to see situations in which the US and the Europe are further advanced than us in, in some of the testing that they're doing. And it's not because we can't do it in Canada. It's just because sometimes we're later to the punch. So we very much try to keep an uh, open eye and awareness on what international markets are doing. We try and get our hands on instrumentation. As an example, we are the only um, 
commercial laboratory in Canada that has a two-dimensional uh, GC by GC. It's housed in this building. The rest of, of the Canadian market that utilizes it is just for research and development um, from a, a university institution perspective. Quick snapshot of the labs itself. A little workflow kind of diagram below. One of the most important parts of the lab is a proper laboratory information management system, and I will talk to you guys about that in a little bit. And this is a shot of our IT department. This is a couple doors down from our corporate headquarters on uh, 12th Street as well. We have a huge support network in our IT and information systems uh, team. Everything that we have done primarily has been built from within. We support all of our Canadian operations and anything we do internationally from here locally, so it's very important that we can keep the uptime here. We have another undisclosed location that holds all of our backup as well, too, so we're continually ensuring that our operations are safe. Cybersecurity is, is something that we struggle with on a daily basis, but our team is incredible at keeping us um, quite safe and, and uh, in operation from a day-to-day -day perspective. On the laboratory information management system, any lab uses a LIM system. You can buy it out of the box, or you can develop it from within. And we've developed it from within because we continue to enhance it, to build it, to grow it, and to innovate it because that's the backbone of your laboratory. That's where all of your results, all of your data are kind of flowing through. That's where you can understand how you're prioritizing the samples, how you're pushing rush work ahead. If that limb system goes down, your entire operation goes down. And so again, that's one of the most important systems that we run on a day-to-day -day basis across our services. And then they've also built back-end services for all of our clients where you can go in, you can access data, you can source from that data, do historical trend reports, data analysis. One of the things that I want to point out here is that as a laboratory, if you just sit back and think 41 years in business and service across Alberta, all of that data and all of that analytical. We have a tremendous amount of information at our disposal and our fingertips. So we continually try to understand how that can be best used and how that can be best served moving forward. I'm very quickly gonna get into the services now. Now you'll see I'm gonna roll through these quite fast because each one can be about an hour and a half to two hours on its own. So it's not because I wanna rush it, it's not because you know, I don't think that they're, they're valuable enough to talk to them more, but we, we, you know, we have some time that we need to get there and I certainly wanna make sure that we're appreciative of your time itself. So very quick snapshot, again, the biggest focus here is kinda of seeing where we operate, what we do, and taking a look at what the labs look like. So from an air quality monitoring standpoint, this primarily is run into the building that you are sitting in right now. You might recognize that front end uh, entrance and the foyer itself. The air quality monitoring services for the most part are all run into here in addition to one specialty laboratory out in our Mississauga office. Um, the air quality monitoring services are typically focused on regulatory compliance, which as many of you know, are ever changing. So that's always something that we need to stay on top of. We need to understand what we can bring to the table that's new and innovative. A perfect example of that would be the fugitive emissions work that is kind of new and upcoming and what we're, what one of the areas that we've adopted into the company itself. We actually did a recent program with Sundry Petroleum Operators Group on that. So one example, our source emission testing. Some of the divisions you will notice that we have our own um, fleet of field technicians and field analysts that will actually go out and pull the samples themselves. In other divisions, we do not. So environmental will be an example where we lean on environmental consultants to do that work, and we specifically do it the, the lab analysis itself. Source emissions testing is an example where we actually do the sample collection itself as well too. And again, from a safety uh, standpoint, you can understand that when our guys and girls are up at the top of a stack, we need to make sure that everything that we are doing in our power to keep them safe is being upheld. Ambient trailers, we can do a rent, a lease, a commissioning program. On this side, one of the most notable projects that we've done in the past year and a half is commissioned a new trailer for LNG Canada. So if you happen to visit, visit the LNG Canada site, you would see one of the agate trailers on site. Passive collection, this has been um, quite, quite busy and, and quite a large part of the air quality monitoring programs in Western Canada in the past. It's phasing itself out for different um, types of methodologies and options on the table as we move forward, but still a component to the lab itself and also run out of this building and facility. And integrative monitoring, so this is where we're looking at industrial hygiene, uh, materials emissions. The specialty analysis that we do out in the Ontario market really focuses on a lot of work through SUMA canisters, so a lot of vapor emissions tied to environmental contaminated sites and, and work through SUMA canisters. And the BC regulations do that through thermal desorption tubes. Environmental chemistry. So, the energy side, the oil and gas side, that's what allowed us to build this company. If we did not have this, that portion of the business, if we did not have that legacy, we wouldn't have built Canada. 
we wouldn't have had operations in Ontario and Quebec. There's no way that you're going to build upstream oil and gas in, in those areas, right? We certainly service the downstream markets and other factors, but we had to be able to be successful in oil and gas. We had to be able to be successful in Alberta to be able to create jobs, create economic opportunities for the rest of Canada, for the rest of the country. And that's a really important part of our story. From there, the environmental chemistry showcases the opportunity for us to grow across Canada because that was really the first division that we got to where we could see it's everywhere. It's in all sectors and in all industries and we really can establish this network right across the country. So quick overview of why this is important specifically to this province, <laughs> Minister Savage, <laughs> looking good. Um, Obviously, that $1 billion well site rehabilitation program is um, of true importance to the province of Alberta. The $1.7 billion that the feds infused, we're doing work with both Saskatchewan and, Alberta, and um, BC in addition to Alberta as well too, but that's a perfect example of how important it is to the province at this point in time. The work that we would do here would support the SRP program itself. It would create jobs, and I'll give you a little bit more information on that in the next slide. And of course, at the end of the day, it's going to improve landowner relationships as we can continue to work on many of those sites. So this shot itself, um, what, we, what we struggle with sometimes in the lab world is that it's become incredibly commoditized and we understand why, we understand the pressures that are being faced by many of the sectors that we serve. The problem with it becoming commoditized is that sometimes that leads individuals to forget how much work goes into the, the analysis of a sample itself. So if you're paying $20 for a sample, you know, and you're paying a little bit more than a Starbucks coffee, sometimes you think, well, that might not that might not cost a lot. Well, you've already seen the square footage needed. You've already seen the instrumentation needed. The capex and overhead is immense. But then let's talk about the actual number of hands that that sample touches. So if we took just one, one example of a, a site, typically when you're doing a site characterization, you're gonna screen for hydrocarbons, metals, and salinities. So that's kind of routine unless you know going in that there's not gonna be an impact on any of those. So let's say you're running the, the routine gamut. That, that chart there shows that there's actually 18 indirect jobs just in the lab. And I'm not talking about overhead services. I'm not talking about the fact that John and I hope to keep a job here or that the IT department is here for support or safety is here for support. I'm talking about the actual hands handling that sample from shipping and receiving and logistics, going through to sample preparation, each instrumentation analyst, because it's going through different instruments, different stations, the report reviewers, the project managers, 18 indirect jobs just on that sample itself. The labs are a volume business, so we can put more throughput in, so it's not like you need 18 on every single sample. There, there is a, a scalability there. But it's a tremendous amount of individuals that we need for this part of the work, and I think that that's really important to point out. So on the environmental chemistry side, while we are primarily focused in oil and gas industry here in Western Canada, across Canada, much different. We're focused in infrastructure, brownfield redevelopment, transportation, a lot of work on federal sites. We're looking at the overall soil and water quality general chemistry that we're that is uh, being focused and comparing that to regulatory guidelines. A couple shots of the labs in the interior that would you, you would see. Another few shots as well. Again, we do have a video on this that we can provide you later on. And at any time, um, our labs are always open for tours and viewings as well. In addition to the routine services, we also offer ultra trace and toxicology and specialty services. Currently, this is being done in our Montreal facility. Now we are expanding parts of that service so that we can complement that in Western Canada as well too. I'll talk a little bit about that at the end, but that's an area where we are expanding. This is an area where we do have US accreditation. And one of the things that I wanted to point out here is when it comes to emerging contaminants, this is the most probable area. So many of you might have heard of the PFAS and the change in regulations that are going to be adopted coming up. CCME is currently looking at putting the PFAS as a regulation into the current regulations. But from what we hear, Alberta Tier 1 regulations will almost immediately adopt it once CCME has it. This is something that is extensively studied in the US and, and Europe. If anybody watched that Dark Waters Netflix documentary, this is, this is what they're looking at for firefighting foams, for different types of um, coatings on substances, on pans and, and um, water rep resistant apparel. So the ultra trace um, and specialty services division is always focused on bringing new opportunities and new instrumentation and technology to the table so that we can really focus on emerging contaminants and be a leader in the industry. A couple shots of some of the instrumentation. Now, um, these are, are quite advanced pieces of instrumentation and cost quite a bit of money and quite a bit of capital infusement. The most recent that we've added to our suite is actually a triple quad to focus in um, 
environmental chemistry for multi-elemental detection in the mining industry. Again, you'll see a little bit about that later. And that's actually housed in this building here. Shot of the mobile lab, you might have seen this kicking around at some point in time if you're driving through Alberta. Typically, the mobile lab is used in spill and emergency release scenarios. It can also be used for remote sites. So if there is a difficulty in getting samples to and from the, the lab, you've got a lot of equipment sitting on sites, you've got cost overruns to kind of day to day. You can put the lab out there so that you're getting more real time data, but most prominently it's used in spill and release scenarios. And then you'll see a quick shot inside the laboratory itself and the team hard at work. And then forensics and specialties. So what we get asked here is, is this like CSI? Is this what you guys are doing? And it, it kind of is like that. And one day it might be because we do want to expand into medical laboratory and DNA testing. Right now, it's very much focused on fire and forensics. And ignitable, ignitable liquid residues, we do a lot of work with insurance. We, do, we can do work with um, the uh, police force in, in each of the areas as well. In addition to that, we do a lot of product identification, weathering identification, hydrocarbon forensics work that ties to environmental chemistry as well too, to get a better understanding of the site characterization itself. And a lot of actual naturally um, natural levels of contaminants that might be in the ground so that you can really understand from um, uh, an impact standpoint, what do we actually need to remove that's true contamination and what's naturally occurring because we don't want to disturb the land when we actually don't have to. So a quick shot of where we're, we're located, Alberta, Saskatchewan, you'll see the multitude of areas of both the branch and laboratory networks that we have. The largest laboratories are in Calgary and Edmonton. We also have laboratory support in Grand Prairie and Lloyd. British Columbia, the largest laboratory there um, and, and key facilities in our Burnaby location. Then we've got branch locations in Terrace, Whitehorse, Fort Nelson and Fort St. John, both supporting environmental as well as mining. Ontario, major lab operation in Mississauga, um, kind of secondary to what we've, we've got in Calgary. At, well, in addition to what we've got in Calgary, it really services the main hub of, of Eastern Canada. And then branch locations in Timmins, Kitchener, London, Sony Creek, Ottawa, and Kingston. So a major network there and one of the areas that we're seeing immense growth in. Similarly, a lot of growth in the Quebec market as well too. The main Montreal facility is there in the top left. So that's where we're doing a lot of the routine environmental chemistry. But like I mentioned, also specialty services. And in addition to that, food testing. You'll see a bit about the food testing as well. And then also a lab in Quebec City and locations in Chicoutimi and Val d'Or. Val d'Or is also very important to our mining operations. And then finally, Atlantic Canada. So the main lab in Dartmouth and then the locations in St. John's and Goose Bay. And a key overview of some of the main clients that we work with. This really represents a lot of the key environmental consultants. In addition to this, we have a number of direct contracts with end users, a lot of oil and gas companies out here, developers, et cetera. Food testing services. Now, this one, a lot of individuals feel like doesn't always fall into the I get fold. You know, we, for a large part, we're looking at resource-based sectors and then we're looking at sub-services that can support those resource-based sectors when we're talking about environmental or we're talking about air quality. So yes, food feels a little bit different than what you would see in some of the other divisions, but it is of tremendous importance and it goes back to that diversification. I don't think anybody here can believe that there's going to be a time in the future where food safety is any less important than what it is today. And from a regulatory standpoint, we expect that the regulations for food safety will continue to grow. So this is an area that showcases incredible stability, incredible opportunity, and something that continues to provide us um, immense growth as we move forward. It's also an area we were looking at expansions in both Ontario as well as in Calgary to serve the Western Canadian market. So very quickly, some of the areas that we're focusing in food is in uh, general chemistry, nutritional analysis. There's a couple shots of the lab here. We're looking at different microbiology services. You're really understanding what's in the food itself. What can we be worried about? And again, going back to the importance of the testing itself, nobody wants to be a headline in a story saying that we told somebody there's salmonella in the food or we didn't tell somebody there was salmonella in the food and on either side of the equation have to try to understand where we went wrong. So, QA is of incredible importance in all of our divisions and even more in food testing. And some examples of some clients. I'm sure some of you are you're very well familiar with some of these. And then energy services. So again, this company wouldn't be without energy. When we talk about that full solar risk approach, here's an example of where we've looked at a sector, we've looked at an area, and we've tried to find every subset of that area that we can help to provide support so that we can come to the table with a full service package for each of our clientele. So from exploration to production, straight into the asset retirement, we can service along the value chain. 
When we're talking about the exploration, here's a couple shots of the buildings themselves at Oil Sands Science Centers on the corner of 32nd Avenue and 19th Street, a couple of our buildings on 21st Street, the geology and reservoir characterization, as well as our shale and mineralogy. Again, I'm going to roll through these quite quickly, but in essence, on the geology and petrology side, you're really looking at the mineralogy of the rock. You can see a couple shots of the, the labs as we continue. We do a lot of work with scanning electron microscopy, x-ray diffraction, thin section analysis, and you're really trying to understand for a client's perspective, what do you have in that asset and formation that can really either offset what you're expecting to get as a return or enhance what you're expecting to get as a return. The routine core lab has been instrumental to the company as we move forward. Conventional core is not as prominent in, in Alberta as we're seeing other, other areas like unconventional in the oil sand sector, um, but still a, an important component of the co company as we move forward. And then the shale and mineralogy lab, you can see some shots here. Not only does it support and serve the energy sector, but it also supports and serves infrastructure, building, development. We're looking at the ability to look at strength, compactability, when we're talking about building roads or building um, uh, uh, bridges. <laughs> and then, of course, oil sand services. We are the largest oil sands service provider in Alberta and Western Canada, and we are very proud to be. This is, is an immense part of the legacy. You can see a couple shots of the Dean Stark lab there, what you would see if you were doing a uh, tour itself. In addition to the actual oil sands analysis, again, we also do the back-end environmental analysis as well too, working a lot with tailings pond analysis for each of the producers. And then you can see a shot of the viewing room. So on the oil sands and also on the conventional core side, what we do is we invite clients to come in, we'll lay out the core after everything has been prepared, and they can actually come in, they can log, they can transcribe, and they can understand what the geology of the core looks like. We have teams of geologists that can actually provide the service in-house as well too. So we offer both, but you'll see the shot of the viewing rooms, the shot of the office space, and of course the client lounge and boardroom so we can make sure everyone's as comfortable as possible. On the reservoir characterization side, a lot of work with special core analysis and enhanced oil recovery. So either on the front end, trying to understand either a new formation or a new asset, you know, you're spending a lot of money on your drill programs, you want to know that what you're doing and the choices that you're making are going to be successful. Or on the back end with understanding how can I get more of this asset, um, how can I actually get more production uh, or more recovery. Here's a shot of the um, instrumentation that we've actually built from within. We've done a lot of work and are a leader in SAG-D simulation technology, so this is, a, is this a shot of something that we've actually brought as innovation to the table. And then a couple more shots of pieces of equipment and instrumentation. And finally, an example of an internal program, Agate Core Enhanced Software. This supports this area of the business. It allows our clients to kind of go into the program and to compare the, the uh, actual pictures of the core themselves, the borehole logs, the well site logs, and actually analyze the data. Petroleum testing services. So here's a quick shot of all of the locations that are incredibly important to petroleum testing. Again, this is an area that when we're in a downturn, it'll see a bit of an impact, but there's also an immense stability there because there's always going to be some baseline level of production. So we're supporting those services. Um, through a very strong network of laboratory and branch locations across Western Canada. Here, the results that we're using, we're typically working together with measurement coordinators and production accounting. Really, the results that we're providing here are going to tell you how much your product is worth. And so there's an immense value there, especially in a downturn where you don't want to leave money on the table. So we're doing work in natural gas, crude oil. You can see shots of the lab as well. A lot of process chemistry work in addition. And oil field water chemistry. Now, this does mark one of the areas that we do have our own full suite of experienced field technicians. You'll see the shot here that do all of the hydrocarbon sampling. In the downturns, what we typically see is that a lot of clients try and, and, and build towards doing the testing on their own because you're looking to cut costs. Again, we understand. The difficulty we see there is we see them, a lot of them coming back because they're not getting representative samples. And when you're using that analysis to, again, try and figure out how much value you have in that product itself, you're going to leave more money on the table than what it is worth. So this is a very important part of our division. They go through an incredible amount of training, annual um, training and refreshing reviews to make sure that we are absolutely aware that we are getting representative samples in this area. And then finally, plant performance. And then a snapshot of the companies um, that have been very key partners with Egget over the years. Many of you sitting here in this room represent some of those relationships as well too, both with companies that are labeled or branded 
like this right now or in companies past. The lubricants testing services, this is an area that focuses on serving multiple sectors. We're doing a lot of oil analysis, coolant analysis, hydro, hydro, hydraulic fracking um, analysis. You'll see a couple shots of the instrumentation. Again, kind of showcasing to you what those laboratories look like should you have gone for a tour itself. Some of the big packages that we focus on is viscosity, as well as the ratio of acid and base numbers themselves, which you'll see next. We do some fuel check programs. So this kind of ties into the mining sector, into the energy sector, whether you've got fleet maintenance, whether you've got rotary equipment on site, machinery, anything that you want to make sure you've got a preventative program in place for, or anything that you want to do some root cause analysis afterwards. And then one of the most interesting parts of this division is the jet fuel certification. So you can imagine if you're 40,000 feet up in the air, you want to make sure that someone's certified that fuel, right? One of the key projects that we've had was actually working on Air Force One. So back in 2002, when the G7 summit was in Kananaskis, George W. Bush was in power, we got a call through our reception to say, Air Force One needs its fuel certified. And we almost didn't take it seriously, but lucky enough, someone patched them through to John. <laughs> And, uh, and we were able, um, very luckily, to be able to do the fuel certification for Air Force One as it returned to the US. And as a thank you, they provided us a certificate of appreciation. So you'll see that in some of our lobbies and some of our labs as you, you go around. Finally, mining geochemistry. So while this is the newest to the company itself, it also marks the greatest opportunity for future growth and diversification. So a lot of what we've built in environmental, we saw that very rapid transition across Canada. Um, that's what we're expecting for mining geochemistry, and that's actually what we're seeing. So here's our current setup. The big lab in Mississauga, as well as the lab in Thunder Bay, um, prep facilities and other areas. You see a big star in Calgary, and that's because we see a lot of opportunity here. And we've been planning that out over the last year and a half. And I have some slides in the back end that will show you what our actual plans are. But we do believe this marks uh, a very important area of diversification for Calgary itself. So here we're really focused on geochemical assaying analysis. If anyone's following the mining industry, precious metal commodities are, are quite key right now. We're seeing a quite a hot streak in them. Of course, a lot of choppiness leading up to the US election, but that's like the whole market. Um, a quick shot of the fire assay work and sample preparation. In mining, it's really about being able to prepare the samples, and then you can get them to any lab that you want. So the addition, additional option here is not even just to look at the Canadian market, but also to look at the international market. And if we can serve the international market from a sample preparation standpoint, again, leading back to what we've done on the oil and gas side, we can, we can create job growth and economic opportunity in Canada to be able to service that on the chemistry side. A couple shots on the instrumentation. And then, of course, the environmental impacts. So in addition to actually doing the work for the resources and, and mining geochemistry, we also do the uh, back-end environmental chemistry operations. And so in particular, the acid rock drainage studies are very key to this area, as well as I mentioned that triple quad investment that we have here locally in looking at things like selenium speciation, multi-elemental detections. Um, that's also quite important for the mining industry. So you'll see some of the clients here. One of our largest uh, relationships has been with Goldcorp since bought by Newmont. Um, New Mongol Corp, you can see in the middle there, but as you can, you can likely see from these logos, the opportunity to not just grow here in Canada, but international is there on the table because we've had those relationships in place now and we can solidify opportunities moving forward.